Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, fellow movie buffs, to an exciting, incredible, actually probably the most depressing episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast to date. Episode number 216, The Father. With me as always, not my father, my good buddy, Mysterious Mike Talent. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? You like that big pause there, Mike? Yeah. What What was the pause for, man? I don't know. It just felt like it. Why not? Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, this, this is a, um, yeah, this is, this was kind of a, a hard movie to watch, but hey, let's, uh, let's talk about it, man. Well, you know, uh, I wanted to do like I always do. I, I know you're the same. We've talked about it multiple times now as the Academy Awards come around. This is an Academy Award nominee. I understand why. But uh, we're trying to knock as many as we can out before the Oscars. And this is one uh, both of us really wanted to see, mostly because of Anthony Hopkins and the praise it's getting, especially on the old Rotten Tomatoes. So, uh, yeah, episode 215, The Father, Mike, uh, go ahead and give us the rundown. I'm sure it'll be quick because it's like five people in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> like Matt said, uh, yep. The Father, uh, this was directed by Florian Zeller. Uh, its writers are Christopher Hampton, Florian Zeller, and it is starring uh, Anthony Hopkins, Olivia Coleman, Mark Gatz, and Olivia Williams. Okay, Mike, we've already discussed our first impressions a little bit, but uh, go ahead and continue. Um, it is a very, very good film, but it is depressing as hell, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really interesting to, cause it's all from Anthony Hopkins character's perspective and it just kind of keeps getting down. Like there's lots of confusing moments. There's, there's lots of kind of just confusion and like there's different characters coming and going and just, you really don't know what's going on. And then as it, it starts to unravel and become more clear what's going on, it's just, it just continues to get, I don't know, sadder and harder to watch, you know, cause it's like, you see somebody's mind kind of breaking down and, and the confusion and the different things that happen with it. Oh, it's rough, man. It's rough. Well, I think the way they told the story was, very very good which is why it's up for academy award it's going to reflect in my rating for sure they tell the story from the perspective of anthony hopkins who is, plays the father clearly is going through the stages of alzheimer's dementia i don't know which stages they're in they don't really explain that they don't explain what time period it is it's a very confusing film and that's how they shot it, and that's how they told the story, which is very powerful. You don't know who's what. You don't know what's coming. You don't know what's going. You don't know which apartment you're in. You don't know. I mean, it, we, you can, we can have a discussion on this movie for probably hours just trying to figure out what he was experiencing and what was real and what was not. And hopefully we're not going to do that. But I got some phil philosophical thinkings I have on it as we get into the spoiler area. But... Anthony Hopkins gives a performance of a lifetime. He was incredible. He's so good. I mean, I was just thinking back of the different roles he's done, you know, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Incredible. Uh, one of my favorites, a lot of people don't talk about it because I guess most critics didn't like it, but it was uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. played opposite of him in Instinct. Another incredible role for Anthony Hopkins. And then you have him do something like this that's extremely emotional, extremely heartfelt, extremely sad and he knocks it out of the park. Oh yeah, man. It it is shot all over the place, Matt. You're right. You don't know what's going on. You don't know who's coming or going and it, you can't quite figure out if the characters are actually who they say they are or if they're not. It's it's quite disturbing. Like and and like sometimes he just hears things open or or people are coming into his apartment or whatever and he's like he doesn't know what's going on and you're just like Oh man, this is this is rough, man. 
and and then you know as the movie progresses you you kind of find out some things but um yeah it's rough i i don't even know if some of the things in it are real or not yeah uh, it was it was really well done though the confusion and stuff they nailed everything and and Anthony Hopkins, I'm pretty sure he's a shoe in again. He's 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 gonna get an Academy Award again. You think so? I don't know, man. Oh yeah. I really, really liked Riz Ahmed. I talked about it on the radio this morning. I really liked Riz Ahmed in uh, Sound of Music. But again, I mean Anthony Hopkins, I mean that I don't want to spoil it, but that final scene, oh dude, that was gut wrenching. Very gut wrenching. You know, and they were successful. Like I was saying about it makes you feel like you're the one that has Alzheimer's because the viewer is confused. You get angry at points. You get upset. You get you don't know what's going on. You don't know who's who. It, they really do make you feel like you're the one that is also experiencing Alzheimer's. And what a powerful, powerful way to tell a story. It was a really good, good way to tell a story. Uh, but at the same time, it, I feel like the audience for this is kind of limited. I don't know if I would recommend a lot of people see this because it, it's it's kind of tough to watch. And like, if you've ever had anybody in your family who's had Alzheimer's, it's even harder to watch because you've probably experienced some of these same things. Um, I know my great grandfather had Alzheimer's, and he he thought I was. Uh, my dad, when I went to see him one time and it was, it was kind of confusing for me and I was pretty little at the time, you know, he's my great grandfather. So, but it's just, you never, you never know. Uh, like, so I, I, I'm probably going to have a hard time telling people to go watch it, but it is extremely good performances and it was just really well done. And you're right. The, the praise for this movie is well-deserved. I'm with you right there, Mike. I, my mom, you know, I, I'm sure you know this. I, I don't know. I, I think you do. I don't know if you ever met my grandfather, not the one that was in Tucson, but he had Alzheimer's. And uh, it was mostly when I was in college. And it was very, very difficult on my mom and my dad, um, especially when they had to make the decision that the daughter ultimately makes in this film. Uh, it was just gut-wrenching for them. And I I told my mom without a doubt, I was like, do not watch this movie. You you will not be able to do it. And so it's sad. She's going to miss out on such a great piece of art, but on the other other side, I think it'll bring up feelings, emotions, and memories that will be too powerful for her right now. Yeah, you're, you're right, man. I mean, there is a decision um, that is discussed in this. I, I don't know if we want to go into spoilers yet, man. I, I guess I need to ask you, Matt, what are you drinking right now just so we can kind of get that out of the way and then we can start talking about some of the things i don't know if it's quite a spoiler but you know yeah just to be safe i understand mike i understand <sighs> mike i'm drinking a beer that i'm actually not a real fan of and i paid a lot of money for it i don't know if you've had it they might be might have come into existence after you I'm not sure after you were in Arizona, but uh, the Grand Canyon Brewing Company's Sunset Amber Ale. It's quite hoppy for an amber. It's extremely malty. But the biggest complaint I have about it is when you get about halfway through, you start drinking it and it's like all foam. Like it doesn't even taste like a liquid. It's just like foam. And I'm like, what is up with this beer? Now, I paid $15 for a six pack, so I'm going to drink all six beers. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know if I will pick this up again or not. Oh man, fifteen for a six pack. That is that's that's a little bit steep, Matt. That's even for a guy who drinks IPAs like all the time. I'm I try to keep it a little less than that, you know. It uh fifteen's a little high. Well, Mike, I'm a baller now. So you know I gotta get a quality brew. No, I was just trying to get something that I haven't had and I wanted to talk about and be a little different. So, you know. Speaking of Mr. IPA How's your IPA today, Mike? Uh, well, you know, Matt, today I'm not drinking an IPA. Uh, I I have uh, a lager. Uh, it was a BOGO, you know, buy one, get one. And uh, it is the uh, Landshark. Nice. So it's just, just a kind of simple drinking one, uh, you know, 
a lot like uh, Coronas or whatever. So, yeah. I know you love your land sharks. I personally am not a big fan, but it's an okay beer. It's all right. It's all right. So, okay. This is an easy one. I was an idiot and didn't realize it was an easy one. And you pointed that out before we hopped on the record button. But, uh, uh, Mike, how does the father relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, man, uh, you, you're right. You thought it was going to be a hard one. There's not, there's hardly anybody in this, and you know, I don't think it took a large staff to make this movie. But Matt Anthony Hopkins plays Odin in Thor and Thor Ragnarok. Come on, man. I know I'm a slacker. I apologize, Mike. I should have known better. How dare I? I, I've, you know, maybe it's because I was too caught up in the awesomeness that was Falcon and Winter Soldier episode number four. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. Oh, I, I think you were just uh, crushing on uh, Chris Hemsworth's uh, body that you couldn't even, you weren't, you were distracted by that, that you couldn't even watch the rest of the the characters. You know, when Thor is on the screen, that's all you can look at. Well, you know, I'm with you on that, Mike, but I am definitely more akin to Fat Thor, you know, Bro Thor. That's definitely more oh, my style. Thor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That that was pretty fun. The the fat Thor was pretty fun. But I mean, yeah, definitely, you know, Chris Hemsworth is rock hard abs. Now, Mike is, you know, with your attention to detail and a desire to see the flaccid penis in films, what if Chris Hemsworth, you know, did that? Would that just be like the movie you have to rush out and go see? Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, I think I think that would be a great uh piece of art. <laughs> Oh, I love it, Mike. I love it. I love how we just keep that joke going. We have a lot of jokes that just have gone on for years. Oh, anyways. Yes, for our for our, for our listeners who might be newer to the podcast, uh, we talked about uh, Game of Thrones season one many, 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 many episodes ago, and I talked about how I really liked it, but uh, I was a little bit you know, distracted by all the flaccid penises in it. And, uh, you know, shortly after that, they changed Game of Thrones. I don't know. I guess there was a lot of criticism. I don't know. I remember there was an episode of South Park where they made fun of it. But, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so that's kind of where that comes from for, for our newer listeners. So which one was your favorite? Uh, was it Hodor? Because, I mean, that, that boy's packing. <laughs> Yeah, I actually went uh, for Halloween one year as Hodor. Just from the waist down, though, right? <laughs> well, Matt, you, you would have to look at the pictures. You sent me the pictures, Mike, and I have to say I'm still disgusted. And I have put them openly on the internet. So anybody wants that, you know, just email me, Matt at realfilmnerds.com. <laughs> nice. Good stuff, Matt. Good stuff. <laughs> I know, I'm well, terrible. Well, moving on. Moving okay. on. Okay, all right, all right. Well, enough with the flaccid penis. All right, Mike, so we're in our spoiler section. I will let you take the lead. Um. So, Matt, with this, there's some kind of references to, like, a sister or, well, yeah, like, his daughter or, um, you know, uh, Olivia's like um sister and it's not clear what happened but it seems like something uh traumatic happened to um in the family but we only see one little glimpse of somebody in a hospital bed and i'm not exactly sure if it's real or not real and like and uh anthony hopkins uh daughter in the movie doesn't really she kind of looks at him like disgusted when he brings it up like er <laughs> like a few times so i'm not sure what it what happened or what it seems like it's some sensitive subject and it's like that just adds to some of the confusion in the movie and stuff you're like is is there really a daughter like what what is going on like it's just like there's a lot of things that just keep happening and like um 
the uh he keeps losing his watch but it's not really lost it's like he just puts it somewhere and forgets about it and it, it, it i kind of highlights how he's having problems remembering things and then it almost even talks about some of the things like i guess um there's periods of very like clear memories of like oh yeah i remember that she told me that she was going to do this and that and then there's lots of other times where characters are repeating back the same things to him and he's like what are what are you talking about i don't i don't understand and just oh just so much stuff man so about the second daughter that's a that's a good one to touch on because i do believe there was a second daughter because his daughter who he's living with also mentions her and they talk about the accident they never say what it was and then you later on see her in a hospital bed. My question is, is I didn't catch it. I might need to rewatch it. But I was wondering if the caretaker that came in, Laura, was actually the same character that was in the hospital bed. Oh, I'm not sure, man. Uh, I would I would have to probably rewatch it as well because it, it's a very quick scene in the hospital bed. You just kind of see somebody looking over and then it's it just over, you know, like it's it's very quick. Yeah. And clearly the family's trying to keep Anthony Hopkins character from remembering it in a way because it whatever it was, it was clearly extremely traumatic to everyone. And that's he's already having a hard enough time as it is. And they don't want to bring that up because it's going to make it worse. So, like, they just kind of ignore when he asks about his other daughter. Yeah. Yep. They they do just kind of ignore it. There's there's a lot of things that he asks people kind of the same questions over and over and over again. Like, you you start to get, like, what what is just – why is he – keep asking all these questions and um can't remember that his daughter Anne, you know is is dating a guy and he's actually extremely mean to her he's like you like <laughs> like it was yeah that was harsh man remember when he was like you have a boyfriend are you sure like it was it was bad dude like i was like dang yeah he was pretty mean about it and the real question is, is it she said she was married at some points and it was the husband and then it wasn't the husband. It was the boyfriend. I mean, it gets really, really confusing. So I have some theories on this. Like for one, do you remember when the boyfriend is like hitting the father in the face like he's slapping him? Yeah. Yeah. OK, that really bothered me. That really upset me. Here's my theory, Mike. Now, I'm going to get a little philosophical about what I think was going on in the whole movie. So the movie ends with Anthony Hopkins in a rest home, and you find out that two of the characters that are switching places with the uh, daughter and the boyfriend are people that work in the care facility. So I'm thinking, this is just my thoughts, he's been in the care facility the entire time throughout this entire story, and he's remembering back. That is why the the faces and names and everything are getting jumbled up because he's getting it confused with his present day, even though he feels like he's living in his flat still. And so when um, there is, and this is going to be hard, especially for me, you know, cause I mean, I felt, I felt this is what happened to my grandfather. I feel like the guy that was slapping in the face, slapping in the face was not the boyfriend. I feel like it was the guy that was working at the care facility trying to slap him out of whatever kind of thing was going on or just blatantly abusing him. Uh, yeah, I, I thought there's a moment towards right at that end scene where he looks at him and, uh, kind of like is taken aback. Like he remembers that he was abusing him or whatever. And then is thinking about it in my mind. It, <laughs> this is how good Anthony Hopkins is. In my mind, it looked like Anthony Hopkins was going to say something to the uh, doctor lady or the other caretaker. I'm not sure who she is. And um, let her know that he's getting abused, but then he doesn't because I think he doesn't trust himself. I got this all from a look. Dude, perfect. Yeah, I, I got the same thing. But it's just... It's real interesting when you start diving into it and thinking about it more and more and more about this movie and what's going on here and why these 
things are happening. I, I, again, it's just a theory, but I think he might have been in the care facility through the entire story. I, I think you're right, man. I, I think it is. There's a there's a shot that they do when they're pulling back from his room in the caretaker facility that is very similar to the flat that they kept showing throughout the movie. And I felt like like the layout of the doors and stuff. So I felt like he's been in the facility for a long time. And I don't know how much time has passed uh, when he's remembering stuff about his daughter. Like, yeah, I've got a boyfriend. I'm moving in with him to like I'm married and all that stuff. Like, I have no idea. It seems like some time has passed, but he has no reference for time anymore. Like it's just, and maybe that's why he keeps losing his watch. I don't know. Like maybe that's like a overall theme. Who knows? Right. Cause even at like the, you see him get put in the facility and they're talking about, and she's like, do you like it? Do you like the park? And then later it, while he's in the facility at the end, he jumps to uh, the nurse saying, you know, well, no, Anthony, you have been here for months. And so then it's, you know, he's like, well, I just got here. No, you've been here for months. So that's why I think you're onto something there, Mike, that it might be even up to years that he's been in this facility. Yeah, yeah, it it might have been. Um, it, yeah, it was so, so rough to watch, man. And then when he's just kind of breaking down at the end, oh, man, it was, it was hard. That was one of the best parts as an actor for Anthony Hopkins, but that was literally one of the most difficult parts to watch because that's like that thing. Um, they mention it in lots of war movies mostly, but whenever even the strongest man in the world that can put up with the most BS and sit there and face, you know, a machine gun firing at him when he's lying, there dying. What does he always call out for? He always calls out for his mother. And that was kind of what I saw with Anthony Hopkins in that moment. Yeah, it was, uh, it was eerie, man. It was eerie to watch, and it was like, uh, yeah. I know, man. It's tough. It's real tough, especially to talk about, too. So, all right. Well, let's let's do this, Mike. Next week, we're going to continue our attempt at watching a bunch of Academy Award-nominated films. Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about our film, Promising Young Woman? Sure, Matt. I'll break that down. All right, so we're going to be talking about Promising Young Woman, and it was, it is a movie about a young woman traumatized by a tragic event in her past, seeks out vengeance against those who crossed her path. So I love revenge movies, so this, this looks like right up my alley, Matt, just like you're saying. Yeah, I figured it's probably your perfect film, except for, you know, I don't know how violent it's going to get, but the trailer looks pretty brutal. So I think you'll probably enjoy watching and reviewing this one, Mike. So, um, yeah. And beyond that, I don't know if we're going to get to too many more Oscar Best Picture films by the time the Oscars come out. Because they're what? Like later this month, right? They're at the end of the month. Uh, I think they're right around the corner, man. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I have my thoughts on what will win. It wasn't a great year for movies. It was a very difficult, difficult year for movies. I'm surprised they're even going to have an Academy Awards, but hey, you know, more power to him for doing it. So uh, honestly, I, as much as I love The Father and as much as I've loved the other ones I've watched, like The Trial of the Chicago 7 and Judas and the Black Messiah and what's the other one, uh, Mank, as much as I loved all those films, I still have to say my film of the year so far, and again, we haven't watched all of them yet, uh, Sound of Metal, man. I really liked Sound of Metal. That was a really good movie. Sound of Metal was really good, man, and what a different concept, and it was it was well done. So I hope it it continues to get some more praise, and um, I I don't know if it's going to win Best Picture, man. I think it's kind of up in the air, man. It's such a weird year. Who knows? Honestly, who knows? But yeah, I haven't watched Promising Young Woman yet. That might put me on my ass. It might be really good. I don't know. I haven't seen Minari yet. I want to watch that. That looks really good. No Man Land was good. I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's movie of the year. Um, I'll put it this way. If the best supporting actor doesn't go to the guy in Sound of Metal, I'm going to be upset because he earned it. He killed it in that film. Yeah, yeah, he did kill it. I, Matt, I just said I, I think Anthony Hopkins is going to get it again. Sorry, man. So Anthony Hopkins for best supporting, best actor, 
Best supporting will be the dude from Sound of Metal. Uh, I, I probably Francis McDermott will probably win for best supporting actress because it's just Francis McDermott. Yeah, and she kind of got snubbed in uh, Three Billboards. So, um, I thought she won for Three Billboards. Oh no, that was Fargo. She won for right. Yeah, yeah. I thought I she, think won, she won for Three Billboards. Fargo. Too, I don't. Though. I don't. No, I don't think she won for Three Billboards. Man, remember Three Billboards kind of got pooped yeah, on. Yeah, it got the shaft because that there was, was a good movie. That was a really good movie. Because there was. There was some controversy with something. I don't remember what it was at the time now. And they just basically wrote off the whole movie. Like, I don't think it got, I it got one, one award uh, that it was nominated for out of a bunch. So, um, Matt, the Academy Awards is uh, Sunday, April 25th. And it's the 93rd Academy Awards. Okay. So we got a couple weeks. Okay. But still, I mean, well, I promised a young woman we might be able to get one more in. I don't know if I want to pay another twenty dollars to watch another movie, but I don't know. Maybe we'll discuss it. If something comes out in theater, Matt, that you're interested in, maybe we go do that. I don't know. I really like going to the theater to watch Nobody. That was a blast. Uh, I think there's going to be some more movies coming out. We're starting to approach what used to be the summer season, so I think they're going to start releasing some more stuff. Vaccines are flowing. I don't know. FF9, baby. FF9. Oh, you mean <laughs> Fast and the Furious? No, I think it's just called F9. No, it's FF9. Like the key... I'm going with FF. Yeah, yeah. You, you're just ready to see uh, Vin Diesel in it one more time. My question is, what the hell can they do? Like, what can they do? They've done everything with a the car. They've dropped them out of airplanes. They've jumped them over other cars. They've jumped them over mountains. Like, what? what is left? Like, they went through mountains. Like, what? what is left, Mike? Tell me, what is left? Cars in space? If they do that, I'm sold. Maybe they'll hold on to that for 10. Um, yeah, yeah, cars in space. That that sounds good. Um You're right. They've already done submarines. There's been, uh, there's been drones. I... I mean, I guess we're just going to have to wait and find out, man. It's going to be an, uh, an amazing movie, I'm sure. Lots of uh, very good dialogue and wonderful acting. Best Picture nominee, 2022. By far. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, you heard it here, folks. So oh, uh, if I... I gotta remember. I gotta remember that because I'm gonna remind you next year. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna get the uh, ultra box set when they're done with all of them? Do you think they're gonna go all the way to Fast and Furious Ten, or are they stopping with nine? Matt, if the movies keep making a billion dollars, they'll be keep making them. Like, there's pretty much if 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 people keep going, they're gonna keep making them, and they continue to do really well. It'll be interesting to see how this one does post pandemic, or in pandemic i don't know i guess we can't say we're post right like I, I don't know will we ever be post will we ever be post we're still hip deep in it you know i i don't know i mean from all accounts people say you know we're gonna be living with this for the rest of our lives so we'll see who knows okay well uh post i i guess we can say post uh the theater closing era i don't know man because uh, yeah, but with, but Godzilla and, and Kong is still killing it in the theaters. It's actually doing well. Like, it's kind of weird, man. I, I don't know. I know you liked it a lot, but I, it's kind of weird that that's the movie that's saving the box office. Dude, it's because it's mindless fun. It's two giant beasts beating the living shit out of each other. Spoilers. With a robot Godzilla that came with it. Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla. <sighs> All right. Well, you can tell his passion, everyone. <laughs> Matt liked that movie. It was I did fun. Not. It was just dumb fun. I like fun. I like fun. That movie to me was not that fun. So, hey, whatever. That's okay. Lots of people are having fun with it, I think. And, um, you know, it's it's good for um, Eleven's career, you know? So she's not just Eleven. Dude, that shit's still weird, man. That shit is still weird to me to see her becoming like an adult. Like, that's weird. It really makes me feel old. 
people grow up, man. Like, when do you think the original Stranger Things was actually shot? I don't know. It's probably like seven years ago. COVID-19 minus eight. <laughs> oh, is that is that how we, 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 we date everything yeah. based on where the, the day, like, COVID plus two? Right. So <laughs> instead of it being like AD or BC, we're not, now going to have C-19. C-19 plus? Yeah. C-19 plus or minus. Yep. <laughs> All right, I I kind of like that, although that would be kind of strange. <laughs> yeah, that was in the C C nineteen minus minuses, man. Like that was way way back. C nineteen minus three hundred. Oh oh, you mean the seventeen hundreds? No 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm onto something. I should call Doctor Fauci. Like you should. What up, dog? I got something new for you. I'm sure he would embrace your your new ideas. Yeah, I got him on on speed dial on my phone. You know, he's my he's my boy. He's my dog. Yeah, you got a zoom zoom number. Yep. I'm like, what up, Fouch? That's what I call him. <laughs> he calls me M Sizzle. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting silly now. <laughs> You are getting silly. All right. Well, I guess in the interest of, of all of that, I guess we'll let our listeners go. But um, thanks for listening, Matt. Do we have no, any more giveaways coming We cannot coming up? let our listeners go, Mike. You have not given your reels, and neither have I. Oh, oh yeah. No, we, we can't let them go. Let's no. reel it up. Let's reel it back in, Mike. <laughs> okay, go. How many reels for the father? Uh, I'm going to give this one four reels. It was really good. It was hard to watch, though, and I feel like it's hard for me to tell people to go watch this, but it is a really good movie, and I want to um, let everyone know that if you're up for it, uh, it is a great movie and, and interesting and leaves you questioning all kinds of things. Well, Mike, I give it four out of five reels for pretty much the same thing. I would have given it four and a half, except for it was just so hard to watch. It's a very good movie, but good God, man, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now you can end the podcast since I caught us that we didn't do our reels. Man, I really got us off on a tangent, didn't I? I think you might have contributed a little bit, but eh, it doesn't matter. We had fun. We did have fun. And uh, yeah, sorry about that, everybody. But um, so... Uh, Matt, uh, do we have any giveaways coming up? That's what I was about to ask. We you have one coming up, I... but I haven't heard anything about it yet. So, uh, probably the week of the Academy Awards, I think, is probably when we're doing it. I think. All right. Well, everyone, uh, catch us next week for Promising Young Woman. And then, uh, you know, go out there and stream as many movies as you can or watch them at the theater if you feel comfortable. And thanks for listening. Catch us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I guess that's it, man. So have a good week. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Good morning, Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds podcast. How are you? Good morning. Lisa Live and Local from Magic 99.1. <laughs> uh, it's nice to hear your voice, Matt. How's it going? Oh, another day in paradise. How about yourself, young lady? Yep, absolutely. Another beautiful week on tap. Not really movie watching weather we're having, is it? No, it is not. It is go and play outside and <laughs> golf and ride your bikes and kayak yes. and canoe and do whatever. And play pickleball. I'll stay away from the pickleballing. That's how people get hurt. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> All right. I know you watched The Father this past weekend. I'm dying to hear your thoughts. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my co-host and I are quickly trying to get in all the Best Picture nominations for the Academy Awards, which are right around the corner. And this is one that we missed, and we paid, you know, the really high fee to rent it online and watch it. And that is The Father, starring Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman. 
And, and I have to say, this is a film that is not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Right. It is very, very, very good, but I don't know if I'll ever watch it again because I had a very hard time watching it the first time. Yeah. Part of that is because I've lost, you know, grandparents to uh, Alzheimer's. And so if you've experienced Alzheimer's personally in your life, it is going to be a very difficult watch. Right. But I... it was done It was done really well. It is very unique how they told the story. Uh, it is a completely different way of, you know, presenting a story like this. It is extremely confusing. They change the characters on you, and that's all to make the viewer feel like they have Alzheimer's themselves. Oh, my gosh. So do you think that it kind of gave you a different perspective? Yes, um, because it instead of like sitting there and being like, oh, you just don't remember, you just don't remember, it's not so much that Anthony Hopkins' character cannot remember. It's more like his life is being fast forwarded through and jumped around. And it's more like it's not in the sequence. So it's not so much that he doesn't remember things. I mean, yes, of course he doesn't remember things, but it, to him it's presented as it's jumping around. He can't recognize his doc daughter and they do that on purpose. They bring her in as, you know, a different actress at a few times throughout the film. His son-in-law comes in as a different actor a few times and it's just very startling and, confusing and that's they they succeeded at it wow okay see um i have had people with alzheimer's in my life and um so i'm on the fence i hear it's a really great movie but like you said it's a hard watch it, it's a very hard watch it's a very sad watch but it, it is well worth it but it's again i mean if you make it about halfway through it and have to turn it off i, I fully understand i I have fought through all the way to the end. It was worth it. Anthony Hopkins, again, delivers an incredible performance, uh, one of the best of his career. He is just so, like, varied on the films he's done and the different levels he can do, and this is just another side of him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that he's one of the reasons I want to watch it, for sure. How many reels are you going to give it? I give it four out of five. Four out of five. Okay, very good. And Yep. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 98%, Metacritic 88, and yeah. uh, IMDb 8.3 out of 10. And do you think Anthony Hopkins is going to walk away with the uh, Best Ac Actor Academy Award? I wouldn't be surprised, but he's up against a lot of competition. I haven't gotten to see, like I said, all the Best Picture nominees yet. I've yeah. seen a lot of them. Right. Um, but uh, I would put him definitely at the top. Yeah. Like. Him and uh, Raz Ahmed, who played uh, the the uh, main character in uh, Sound of Metal, those two are probably towards the top for me. Right, right. I think I agree with you on that. I saw that movie. All right, very good. What are you going to watch this week? Well, we're going to keep going with uh, our Best Picture nominee catch-up, and we're going to try and watch Promising Young Woman. Okay, I have seen this movie. I'll be anxious to see what you think about it. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm interested to hear what you thought about it, because yeah. I've watched the trailer, and I'm like, huh, that is not what I thought this movie was going to be. Yeah, yeah. Wait till you see it, and we'll chat about it next week. What do you think? Sounds great. Um, I, I'm, I am so looking forward to it. All right, I can't wait. Text me after you've watched it, all right? I want to know. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I will. <laughs> all right, Matt Hinshaw. Check out his podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerds. Appreciate you spending time with me this morning. I always enjoy spending time with you, Lisa, even if it's not in person. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We'll catch you next week. Have a great one. You too.